Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the Beretta 92X RDO and this pistol really is changing my mind about the 92 series. Now, I've done a video on the 92FS. We're going to talk about that through this video, but if you're interested to see my opinions about that, you can check out the card at the end of the video. Realistically, I think Beretta has done a great job in kind of updating the Beretta 92 series. We're gonna talk about some of those upgrades and some of the things that they've changed, not only in the 92X RDO, but also their M9A3 and M9A4 models as well, because all three of those pistols are gonna be relatively similar. But before we get into that, gotta pay the bills and talk about the sponsor of this video and that's going to be preparewithfitandfire.com. I've got a link in the pinned comment if you guys are interested in swinging by. I've partnered up with My Patriot Supply to provide you guys an opportunity to not only support the channel by ordering some emergency food stuffs from My Patriot Supply but also naturally providing you with something that's going to help prepare you for certain events that may be coming to us soon. Now, I don't want to be alarmism or anything like that, but if you're paying attention to the news with inflation rising and, you know, harvest season going to be happening here fairly soon, we might be in a situation where food might be a hot commodity. So having something kind of socked away to get you through, you know, some type of natural disaster, some civil unrest, whatever the case may be, might be a good idea. Preparewithfitandfire.com is going to get you set up with that. And it's something that I believe in. I use their 72-hour bags to put into my truck so I always have food no matter what. I encourage you guys to swing on by, check that out, see if it's right for you. And if it is, it would really help the channel. If not, there's no obligation. But it's something, like I said, I believe in and I'd hope you guys would check it out as well. Okay, let's get back into the video. Again, we're going to be talking about the Beretta 92X RDO, and the RDO is for a red dot optics ready version of the 92 series. Now, this is going to have a couple of different kind of upgrades or improvements that I think that the 92FS needed for quite some time, but with Beretta getting involved in attaching a red dot to this pistol, I think it has really kind of helped a number of other aspects as well. So let's just do a quick overview of this. Um, there's a lot of other videos that's gonna go into a little bit of a deeper dive on this. And this is really going to be kind of my first impressions because I've only got about 250 rounds through this, but I really, really do like a lot of the added features that they've put into this pistol in comparison to the 92FS. What are the first things that I like to look at? You guys know, you've been with the channel. Sights, trigger, and ergonomics. Those are the first things that I'm going to be looking at anytime I pick up a pistol for the very first time. So let's talk about ergonomics real quick because I was really kind of critical about the 92FS and it's kind of lackluster ergonomics. And the thing about the 92X is what they have done has added some checkering on the front and rear of the frame, and then has put in these really nice kind of upgraded panels on the side that is going to really add some traction on this. Not only is it going to add more traction, more texture to the pistol grip itself, but it's also going to be nearly to the top of the slide, which is going to allow your support hand to really get in there and hold this and get some traction to help mitigate recoil. And that's one of the things I really, really do like. In addition to that, they have kind of um, accentuated the magazine release and put some texturing on that as well, and that's something I really do like. It's almost kind of enhanced is the best way to look at it. So really good on Beretta for changing that up. Now, there are some complaints that say that these panels here are kind of thin, they're a little flimsy, and they break easy. I haven't had any issues with that. I don't see that, I don't feel that, but other people have that complaint. So just be mindful of that. 
The next thing that I really do like is how they've gone about setting up the sights on this. Obviously we can see it's got a uh, red dot mounted, but if you don't mount a red dot and if you're just going to be looking at the sights, it has a very nice high-vis front red colored front sight and then a blacked out rear, which is exactly how I like it. Um, these are driftable as well, so if you guys are looking to uh, adjust the point of aim, point of impact, you can do that with this pistol. And it's pretty much set up exactly how I do like it. So there is that great on Beretta for doing that aspect of it. The next thing, obviously, is they have uh, improved the trigger. Uh, the trigger on this is quite interesting because of adding the red dot here They had to change some of the internals on this pistol So you're going to get a bit of a better trigger on this pistol uh, Obviously with a double action single action style of trigger You're always going to have that take up, but once you get into that wall, it's going to break really nice there and then your reset is really short something I really do like, shorter than the 92FS, nice break on there as well. Naturally, you can uh, just fire it from the double action, um, and that trigger pull is, I would say, on par with the 92FS. It's maybe a little bit lighter, but even still, uh, it's going to be uh, nice to have that option because one of the things that I ended up learning about the 92FS from my first video was the fact that you are able to basically carry this with the safety off in double action mode and there's no way to have this firearm go off unless the trigger is pulled because that's going to move the firing block out of the way for the firing pin and uh, it renders it safe if it is set up in this configuration. So you're going to have to have a intentional pull on that trigger before it will fire. That's something I did learn from you guys and I really do appreciate that. So really awesome. Now, naturally I would not suggest carrying it in the single action or the hammer cocked position uh, because that light trigger pull uh, would obviously defeat the whole purpose. But uh, carrying it on fire in double action is a viable option for a lot of people out there. So there is that. Some of the other additions to this pistol is a Pictionary section here on the dust cover, which is something I really do like because I always put a light on my pistols, uh, specifically because of the holster that I use. I am using the Blackhawk Omnivore and uh, it allows you to use uh, tons of different pistols with that holster as long as you are utilizing a TLR-1 light. So attaching a light on here allows me to get to the range. I can use the same holster for anything that I'm testing out for you guys and I really do like that. So having that there is uh, great and it also allows for uh, some weight to be added to the frame so it also helps with mitig recoil mitigation as well. In addition to that it has some really nice front slide serrations because with Berettas, especially with it being an RDO, you're going to want to reach over and kind of cock it that way. But the downside to that is if you've been shooting this already, you have an exposed barrel, that's going to get hot. And if you're shooting without gloves, man, you're going to end up burning yourself that way. All right, let's get into the red dot situation <laughs> for this pistol. And uh, right off the bat, holy, Height over bore, Batman. <laughs> this, this is really, really interesting. Obviously, you can see that it is uh, pretty high up there, but if you look at the front, this plate actually hugs the slide fairly well, or at least that's what it looks like. The side here ends up being a bit of a optical illusion because it is concaved on the underside of the plate, but it is extremely sturdy. It has done very, very well for me. In addition to that, having a red dot on this particular pistol has seen really good accuracy. Accuracy that I wasn't expecting myself to be able to pull. At 20 yards using 115 grain standard ball ammunition, I think it was 115 grain Winchester white box, if I remember correctly, I was able to get four or five rounds on a one inch square at 20 yards and uh, that's 
really telling, not only of the accuracy with this pistol, but the combination of this pistol and a red dot added to it. And that's one of the major reasons why I prefer to have red dots on pistols. However, one of the biggest issues that I have found is every time I draw this pistol, I'm having to search for that red dot because I'm not used to the height over bore with this red dot being so high up on the pistol, I'm still having to locate that pistol, excuse me, locate that red dot as I'm drawing. And if I'm trying to do anything quickly, it's just not there for me as of yet. Now, I'm gonna spend some more time with this pistol. I'm gonna put it through a couple IDPA matches and see what I can do to uh, kind of fix that issue. But uh, as it stands right now, this pistol and the way it's set up is um, surprisingly good. Not only was I able to get this pistol with two of the 18 round magazines, but the deal that I got was an additional 21 round magazine for only 638 bucks the entire package and that's one heck of a deal for uh, this particular pistol actually ends up making it cheaper than my beloved CZ SPL1 tactical so uh, may do a comparison video between those two um, we'll see I don't know but realistically overall this pistol has really kind of pushed itself into the 21st century with all of these different kind of improvements I guess is the best way to say it for the Beretta 92FS, even though I have never been a big fan of this particular pistol from my experience in the military, I also know that that's a bit of a biased take as well. It's a fine pistol, it's done a lot of people very well, and uh, there has been some really cool improvements, not only with the 92X, but the M9A3, the M9A4, and the uh, Langdon Tactical Berettas as well. So that is something I really do like. The biggest downside I would say with this particular setup is going to be the height over bore on the red dot and maybe the grip panels here being a little flimsy, but uh, realistically, you probably can finagle those uh, to work for you. And I would say if you can find one of these under $700 like I did, I would definitely jump on this. So what do you guys have to say? Sound off in the comment section down below. What's your opinion of the 92X or the uh, Beretta 92LTT, uh, the Langdon Tactical versions? Uh, do you prefer just the original 92FS? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. If you guys aren't subscribed or following me on Instagram, I'd really appreciate you guys swinging by and checking that out. I know that does require you to sign up for Instagram and a lot of people just don't like to do that. But if you're already on there, go ahead and swing on by and check me out there because I am doing a ton of stuff behind the scenes on Instagram, almost daily content for you guys. And uh, I would love to see you guys over there as well. In addition to that, I do have my newsletter that I'm doing every single week and uh, doing giveaways as well. So sign up for that. I'll have a link to all of that in the pinned comment as well. Really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thanks for all the support and staying with me till the end. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. We'll catch you guys later. See you guys. Bye.